All right, we are now in part two of section 3.6. All right, we're going to talk about stretches and shrinks. So, stretches and shrinks. This is confusing. You can transform a function by multiplying all of the x coordinates. So let's think about this. You have ordered pairs. You're going to multiply all of the x coordinates by the same factor of a. Now, we have two options. a could be greater than 1. It could also be between 0 and 1. Now, if it's greater than 1, the transformation is a horizontal shrink because the graph shrinks towards the y-axis. When it's actually between 0 and 1, the transformation is a horizontal stretch because the graph stretches away from the y-axis. And it's, it looks just like how it sounds. Shrink, it shrinks. Horizontal stretch, you like pull it apart. Shrink is pushing it in, it gets closer to the y-axis. Horizontal stretch pulls it apart. In each case, the y-intercept stays the same. The y-intercept stays the same. Now, you can also transform a function by multiplying all of the outputs, the y-coordinates, by the same factor. When you have a value that's greater than 1, the transformation stretches vertically. Because the graph stretches away from the y-axis, so if you took your hand and pulled it up and down, that's a vertical stretch. Kind of like, um, let me show you an example in a bit. Now, when 0 is less than a, is less than 1, the transformation is a vertical shrink because the graph shrinks towards the x-axis. In each case, the x-intercept stays the same. So, a horizontal shrink is when you take the object and you squish it this way. A horizontal stretch is when you stretch it out. A vertical stretch is when you take it and pull it up and pull it down. A vertical shrink is when you squeeze it in. You push it down, push it up. Now you may be asking yourself, Mr. Humphreys, we obviously can multiply by a number that's positive, bigger than 1, or from 0 to 1, or between 0 and 1. But what happens if we multiply by a negative? Good question. Here it is. If you multiply by a negative, the graphs of y equals f of negative ax and y equals negative a multiplied by f of x represent a stretch or a shrink and a reflection. So if it's going to be, it's going to be a stretch or a shrink, but the negative means you're also going to reflect it, either in the x-axis or the y-axis. So, talking about horizontal stretches and shrinks, the graph of y equals f of ax, now let's look at this, this is taking a and multiplying it by the input. That is going to give you a horizontal stretch or shrink by a factor of 1 divided by a of the graph y equals f of x. So let's look at the black line. The black line is your y equals f of x. Now, it horizontally stretches and shrinks. If you're multiplying the input value, the x, you are horizontally stretching it, which means the y-intercept stays the same. So look at the black line. If you multiply it by, by a number greater than 1, you are going to multiply the x values by whatever you're multiplying by greater than 1, and you plug it in. And then your output is this, your blue line. That is a shrink. Notice that this has been shrunken towards the y-axis. The red has been stretched. You're getting farther away from the y-axis because the number is between 0 and 1. Now, vertically stretching means you're multiplying your output, f of x multiplied by a. If you multiply your output by a, it is going to be vertically stretched or shrunk by a factor of a. Notice this. This is by a factor of 1 divided by a, 
This is by a factor of A. So if you take your black line, the x-intercept stays the same. Your A is greater than 1, means it gets stretched. You're pulling it away from the x-axis. This red line means it's being shrunk. It's being pushed closer to the x-axis. This is confusing. I'm not going to lie to you. This can be difficult. All right, so let's start example number three. Now, this is, is going to be confusing. This is confusing. So let's first, well, what I'm going to do first is I am actually going to graph f of x equals x minus 1. All right, so there's my graph. f of x equals x minus 1. That's my line. So what I want to do is this. I want to take g of x. g of x, and that's my new function, which is my f of x is now going to turn into f of 1 third x. So here's what we do. Here's how you start the problem. We start by making a t table. Now, the t table that I'm going to draw we're just going to pick values of x. Now here, what are we going to do? We're going to plug them in, and we have to take a third of them. So I'm going to pick values that I can take a third of. And so that's going to be negative 3, 0, and 3. You could pick 12, you could pick 4, you could pick whatever you would like. But I'm picking negative 3, 0, and 3 because I can take a third of those. So now I have to take a third of x. So my third of x is going to be basically taking a third of each of these numbers. So that's going to become negative 1, 0, and 1. Now what's going to come out of that is f of 1 third x. Because I'm taking the 1 third value, this is important to understand, I'm taking the 1 third x in, like that's my input, I'm plugging it in, and what comes out is my y value of 1 third x, my f of 1 third x. So we're going to take negative 1. We're going to plug it in. Negative 1 minus 2. I'm sorry, negative 1 minus 1 is negative 2. Then I'm going to plug in 0. 0 minus 1 is negative 1. And I plug in 1. 1 minus 1 is 0. So those are my three points. And I'm going to graph those using uh, red. And so what I'm going to graph, by the way, is this value and this value. Because I have to do the ordered pair x, comma, f of 1 third x. So I'm going to graph negative 3, negative 2. And so there's my line. So what's happened? Here's what we got to look at. We have to know what we're doing. So the graph of g, this is g of x. The graph of g is a horizontal stretch. Notice that it pulled away from the y-axis. So it's a horizontal stretch of the graph of f by a factor of 3. Now, why is it a horizontal stretch? Because if we look at our key concept, it said a, our a, by the way, is 1 third. If our a was between 0 and 1, it's a horizontal stretch. Now, to find the factor, I have to take 1 over a. So 1 divided by 1 third gives me 3. That's how I get, right here, the factor of 3. So now we go to the next one. We have x, and now we're going to do h of x equals 3 of f of x. Well, look at what's happening. We have to first find values of x. So let's pick values of x. I don't know. Let's just pick 0, 1, and 2. So I plug them in. Notice that it's f of x right there. So f of x means I actually do what f of x is. So I do f of x. I plug them in. 0 minus 1, 1 minus 1, 2 minus 1. I now multiply these outputs by 3. So that would give me negative 3, 0, and 3. So that means my ordered pair is x comma 3 f of x. So I take the values here and here and I graph them. So if I graph them, 0, negative 3, 1, 0, notice that the x-intercept didn't change, and 2, 3. Now, 
the x-intercept didn't change. Once again, you should use a ruler or a straight edge. Notice what happened here. The x-intercept didn't change. If the x-intercept didn't change, that means it's a vertical either shrink or stretch. Because we pulled it away the x-axis, it's a stretch. So it's a vertical stretch by a factor of a, which is just 3. Vertical stretch by a factor of 3. So hopefully your brain is not complete mush yet. So we're on example 4. We are now going to take f of x equals x plus 2, which I've already drawn for you because that's the easy part. In red, in part A, we're going to take g of x and do f of 4x. So here we go. Once again, you just start by picking values. So I'm going to pick negative 1, 0, and 1, just randomly making things up. Now, just looking at it, what do I do? It says I multiply the inputs by 4. So if you multiply the inputs by 4, so that would be negative 4, 0, and 4. Pretty easy. Now, f of 4x, we now have to take these inputs and plug them in because they're inputs. We have to input the inputs. And hopefully that makes sense. So negative 4 plus 2 is negative 2. 0 plus 2, 4 plus 2. So I take this column here, this column here, and I get x comma f of 4x. So that would give me negative 1, negative 2, 0, 2. Notice the y-intercept did not change. And 1, 6. We squished everything towards the y-axis. Notice how it got squished towards the y-axis. So this, if we moved it, like I took my fingers and I pinched it from left to right, this is a horizontal, and once again, I know that because the y value didn't change, horizontal shrink by a factor of, let's get confusing, one-fourth. It's one-fourth because horizontals are always one over a. Well, it's four. So what is a? A is going to be one-fourth because one divided by one-fourth is four. So it's a horizontal shrink by a factor of one-fourth. All right, in example four, I've already graphed very poorly, by the way. I graphed a very poor line. You should always use rulers, which I cannot do on the iPad with a stylus. So we're going to use h of x equals one-fourth of x. So once again, looking at it, we have x. I'm going to take numbers I can take one-fourth of. Um, well, it's your output. So let's just pick numbers. I'm just going to pick negative 2, 0, and 2. Now, it's, it's my output. I have to take one-fourth of my output. This is my input. So I actually have to plug it in. So negative 2, if I plug it in, negative 2 plus 2 is 0. 0 plus 2, 2 plus 2. I now take a fourth of all of those. So it's going to be one-fourth of f of x. So that gives me 0. One-fourth of 2 is one-half. And one-fourth of 4 is 1. I take this column. I take this column. And I get the ordered pair. x comma one-fourth f of x. If I graph them, negative 2, 0. Oh, look, the x-intercept did not change. 0, 1 half, 2, 1. It's gotten shrunk. Now, what did it shrink by? It's a vertical shrink since it got closer to the x-axis. A vertical shrink by a factor of 1 fourth. Now, once again, horizontal shrinks and stretches are where you do the 1 divided by a. This is just times a. So we take the 1 fourth and just put it right there. Example 5. We're combining everything together in one problem. So you have to graph both of these and describe the transformations from the graph f to the graph g. So let's just graph them right now. 
All right, so I have graphed both of these. I want to know what has happened. What have you done to go from one to the other? So we start with our first bullet. What's happened? I'm going to start with the two. We start with the two, whatever's being multiplied by the x. Because remember, we start with an x. So what are we multiplying to the x? We're multiplying a two. Now you could say negative two, but negative two means two things are happening. So we're going to separate it. So if we're multiplying by two, that means what? Well, let's back up a little bit. We can actually take this original g of x right here, and we can rewrite it as g of x equals negative 2 of f of x plus 3. That is your x. So f of x is what the output is. So we are taking negative 2, multiplying it by the output. If we're taking the negative 2 and multiplying by the output, let's just take the 2. If you're multiplying by 2, what does that mean? It means you are vertically stretching by a factor of two. So here's what we're gonna say. We're gonna stretch the graph of F vertically by a factor of two to get the graph H of X equals two X. Now, if we graph that, well, we're not gonna graph that. You could graph it and see what's gonna happen. But now we need to reflect it. So if we reflect it, it's going to become negative 2x. By the way, the h of x, I just made that up. You can use any letter you want. So if you reflect it, what's happening? You're reflecting the negative of the output. So that means the, the y-axis is what you're changing. That means it's a reflection in the x-axis. So we're going to reflect the graph of h of x, which is this, the graph of h, in the x-axis, because the outputs are changing, to get this new graph of r of x equals negative 2x. Now, the last thing I'm doing is doing the plus 3. Now, the plus 3 is being added to the output. Therefore, it's going to go vertically up 3 units. And now I'm going to translate the graph of r vertically up 3 units to get this new graph of g of x equals negative 2x plus 3. Now, I use g of x because that's what's used up here. And these are your steps. Notice that you are not saying you're going up, you're going right, you're going left. These are very detailed descriptions. Our last example. A cable company charges customers $60 per month for its service with no installation fee. The cost to a customer is represented by C of M equals 60M, where M is the number of month of service. To attract new customers, the cable company reduces the monthly fee to $30, but adds an installment fee of $45. The new cost, or the new the cost to a new customer, is represented by this function, where M is the number of months of service. Describe the transformations from the graph of C to the graph of R. All right, so we're going to start by rewriting it. I am starting with C of M equals 60m. Now I can rewrite that. Now I'm going to make up this. r of m equals one half of c and m. Because remember, I want to take a half of whatever 60m is. So c of m plus 45. So I'm taking the m here. You're taking half of this function because 60m, I have to take half of 60m to get 30m plus 45. So the first thing I have to do is take half of this. So step one. So let's look at what we have. We're going from 60m to 30m. So obviously you can see we're taking a half of 60 to get 30. So we take a half. Because we're taking a half, notice that the black line is our original. We're shrinking it. It's getting closer to the x-axis. So it's a vertical shrink by a factor of a half. And then we take that blue line and we move it up. Well, what do we move it up by? We do a vertical translation, 45 units up. 
So this would be my answer. 